the secret, the, the skeleton key to all of design is learning proportions. And I don't know how else to do it, a better way to do it than to learn topography. So here, I'm gonna take Resonate, the title of the publication, the subtitle, the journal for graphic design in January, February. I'm gonna show you how to use lines to group and to separate, how to draw emphasis to things. So the first one's really easy. All I'm gonna do is take that text, I'm gonna put it on one line across here, I'll zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit better. And I've just anchored everything on one horizontal line, which is this one. And I could do variations on this now. I can repeat the line and do one on the top and one on the bottom. I've changed it to be half, like this is four points and this is two points in thickness. And the reason why I do that is I'm still obeying the law of contrast where if you're gonna use a different point size, we suggest that you double the point size or more. So instead of using 36 point type and 42 point type, we would say you use 36 and 72 point. So if I use two rules, don't make one four point and one 3.7 points. It doesn't make any sense. It'll look like a mistake. So it's half as thick as this line. Here's another example. And the reason why I showed you this is because as I was scanning the different layouts, I, I saw like certain themes emerge and people were designing in a very specific way, but they weren't using lines as tools to aid in communication and to guide the eye. So I just want to show you some very basic things to do with lines that are functional, not decorative. Okay, so here, the same line exists, but this time it's including a little line going vertically. And this is a divider. So the bottom line anchors these two groups of information together, but this little vertical line says, this is the date. And this is kind of cool because over time, this could change to March, April. And now we know this is a variable that will change, but this is constant. This piece of information is constant. This is variable. So we're both grouping and dividing here. Wow. These are such good lessons, Chris. Thank you for saying that. So here we have basically two lines, one to anchor the two pieces of information, but one to draw emphasis, and they serve different functions there. And if you take a look at that, it kind of looks modern. It's kind of cool. So you're probably sitting there thinking, okay, everything that we can do with lines and shapes for these two pieces of information is done, but you would be mistaken, my friend, because we're going to keep going. So here's another way to use now a shape. And, and this was asked uh, in typography class when I was still a student at Art Center, what's the difference between a rule and a shape? Well, at a certain point, a line becomes so thick, we stop reading it as a line and we just call it a shape. And it's one of those things like, uh, like I'll know it when I see it. Because at a certain point, you could say and you could argue that's a shape and I wouldn't be able to argue with you. So here, this big black box draws our eye towards Resonate, the Journal for Graphic Design. It gives it a lot of importance because of the maximum amount of ink and contrast that we're creating. And this tiny little bracket here says, yeah, but we're related. We know each other. We came to this party together. Yet very organized. And that's the beauty of it. It's kind of that Swiss modern kind of organizational thing that I really enjoy and like. And so I, I hope to introduce you to some of this visual language that you can incorporate in your design work. Yeah, yeah, very powerful. Okay, so here's another way. I don't love this one, but there are three vertical lines, repetition. Remember, it's all consonants and dissonance, repetition and contrast. And so these three things say, you know, because this is only one story high and this is two stories high. Well, by doing this, we group these things together. These same principles apply to almost every kind of design. And the one that I could relate to most is architectural. You'll see that there's a little window or doorway to the right here, but it's still enclosed in this structure and it's pretty cool. Okay, I made this one dotted just to show you. It doesn't have to be filled in because they separate, but our eye can travel through the empty spaces. Here's another way of using the line to tie the information together. So in this case, I made the date aligned vertically, centered, and I put a little dot there uh, just through the stroke, right? So if you go to the stroke panel, it's right there. You can choose different arrows and doodads and fingers and all kinds of things, but just a little circle. So that gives it a little visual weight and emphasis. Nice. So keep going. So in this case, I'm treating this like it's a piece of paper. Mm. So it has its own shape and it, it can block things. It can intersect with things. It can be rotated. It can do lots of different things. But right now, I just offset that a little bit. So they're grouped, but separate again. Lots of things you can do here. And we can get really crazy. And I'll show you what I mean right now. So if I take this and then I put it on top, it creates another feeling. I, I wanted to show you that to you. And I put it behind, it creates a different feeling. 
It creates depth. Right? So there's a lot of things that you can do. So if I line that right there, let's just say that was a line. And now the E is impossible to read, but nice. these are things that you guys can play with and you should play with them to figure out what works and what doesn't work. Same two boxes this time stacked one on top of each other, one inverse, and it creates yet another feeling. And generally speaking, I didn't do this, but if you, you want to repeat the measurement here, it should be the same. And then you offset it. And you're going to see this a lot in architecture. For example, imagine if this were the first story of the building, this is the second story of the building, and this is uh, an empty space, so it's cantilevered over it. If we're looking at the elevation, looking at a building as if we're standing on the street looking at it. And you look at it and you'll say, oh, that's really cool and modern. All they did, they, were, they took shapes and they offset it. And you can see a lot of the modern buildings, skyscrapers, they'll take this and they'll offset it and they'll rotate each floor a little bit differently. And that creates a, a deck, a roof deck or something like that. And it's pretty cool. If you look at some of the work from Ginsler, you'll see things like this. Same idea is being applied over and over again. All right. Chris, would you put a class on that? I, I, I'd like to sign up for it. <laughs> what class might that be? Tell me the title. <laughs> the architecture class that you're talking about. <laughs> architecture slash typography. You How know, do you incorporate? Yeah. Yeah, believe it or not, I've actually designed buildings before, exteriors and interiors, based on the same principles that I'm sharing with you today. All right. And I've, I've had the pleasure of working on many different design projects, not just two dimensional, but three dimensional. One of my clients actually hired us to design the facade of a building. And it was really cool to be able to do that. Nice. Why I've said many times before, the secret to all of design is learning proportions. And I don't know how else to do it, a better way to do it than to learn topography. I've used the same thing to design a floor plan for, for my office, to design furniture for my, my space and to design buildings for clients, facades, okay? It's not, not uh, structural engineering, but yeah. The last one I wanted to show you here is an open box. So I just deleted the top of the box and put it here. And it kind of feels like it's balanced on this little thing, right? So it creates a different feeling and you can keep layering. You can do different things with this. So if I fill this box with white, I'm gonna do that right now. And I were to take a shape and do something like this. And I'm gonna fill the shape with a pattern. Let's say I wanna fill it with this kind of pattern and get rid of the stroke and I'm sending it to the back there. Very 1980s. Yeah, this is the whole Memphis design style. Right, Milka? Yeah, April Griman. <laughs> well, uh, era, not April Griman, but yeah. her era. Yeah, she might call us later and say, uh, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Cal Art. <laughs> so like little registration marks. Oh, how awesome is that? And then now we're, now we're cooking with gases, they say. So here I've taken the mass head resonate. I've done the same thing. I've anchored it with a strong, like Milko would call this, the spine, a strong baseline, something to anchor all these components together. And then I've cut it off. So we're seeing the head and not the feet. Uh, I love that analogy. And then the journal for graphic design tucked underneath it, separated by a couple things, but also with this little uh, vertical stroke that, that creates a T to say like, we're done. There's no more information beyond this stop here. So our eye doesn't have to keep looking to the right. It's a strong stopping point and a way to kind of finish the design. If you're enjoying these critiques inspired by the work you see and want to get better at layout and design for print, web, film, or television, we have a course available on our site that is designed just for you. It will help you to learn the rules of typography, how to create contrast, control focal points, achieve asymmetrically beautiful layouts, how to critique your own work, keyboard shortcuts and include my personal tips on how to build an asset library so you can design at the speed of thought. As an added bonus, students who are enrolled in the course can participate in future critiques, get updates as we release them, and a time-lapse video of me working on layouts, not available anywhere else. You can jump in anytime, work at your own pace, and take your typography skills to the next level. That's it for me. I hope to see you in the future.